Well, if you have a Bible, you can open it up to John chapter 17, or you can follow along with the reading in the bulletin. This evening, as we conclude our Lenten study of the Lord's Prayer, we get to the final portion of the Lord's Prayer where Jesus says to us as his followers, here's how I want you to pray. And we pray to our Father in heaven, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And sometimes we say the Lord's Prayer, and the reason we did this study during Lent is I'm guilty of it as well. We say the Lord's Prayer, we get to amen, and anybody just kind of move on to the next part of whatever you're doing in life? Sometimes we do that in service, right? The first time I had to learn the Lord's Prayer was in first grade in Mrs. Burkhardt's class, all right? And I still remember her because she put my name on the board every single day. And a lot of check marks, right? And those were not good check marks, okay? And one of the things that we had to do in our little Lutheran school was memorize the Lord's Prayer during first grade. And we had to learn it in the King James Version. So guess what version I still say in my head? I don't know anything else in the King James Version, but I know the Lord's Prayer. All right, so I, like many of you, have known the Lord's Prayer for the majority of my life. And there are times where I go slowly through it, and I meditate on it, and I study it, and I take it in my heart to the Lord and say, yes, Lord, this is a beautiful prayer that you've given to me. But if I'm honest, there are other times where I'm just saying it, and I get to the end, and I move on to whatever I'm doing next. Now, Personally speaking, and the people that I've met in my time as a pastor, there are parts of the Lord's Prayer that we tend to focus on more than others, right? One of the most famous ones that I meet a lot of people focusing on is, give us this day our daily bread, right? Now, it's good, and it's true, and it's it's a prayer that Jesus told us to pray, and why do we pray it? Because what? We have requests, we have needs in this life, and we're going to our Father saying, will you help me? Will you provide for me in this way? The other one is, forgive us our trespasses, forgive us our sins, because we need forgiveness. And one of the ones that I think that we often move the fastest through is this last petition from Jesus where he tells us, I want you to ask the Father to deliver us from evil. Now, there's a way in the Greek that translated as evil or the evil one. Literally in the Greek, the phrase is the evil. So you have a choice. You could say, Lord, will you deliver me from evil or will you deliver me from the evil one? In John's gospel, the high priestly prayer that we just read, it's the same word where we translate it here as Jesus saying, guard them from the evil one, right? Now, what I want us to do tonight, using the Lord's Prayer, the high priestly prayer of Jesus, and then this great statement from Revelation is to realize three truths in our lives as Christ followers based on what Jesus teaches. He tells us, here's how I want you to pray, deliver us from evil. So here's the first reality that we have to come to grips with and acknowledge. There's evil in the world, right? How many of you already knew that part, right? Yeah, there's evil, there's wickedness, there's brokenness, there's sin in the world, right? So sometimes I've seen people believe that if you just give your life to Christ, if you believe in Jesus, if you follow him, you do the Ten Commandments, everything will work out. Now, eternally speaking, that's true. But right here in this world, that's not always true. And here's my evidence for it. Jesus himself tells you, here's how I want you to pray. Lord, I need you to deliver me from evil, right? Not you know, bad ideas, not mistakes, not, you know, mean words. I need you to deliver me from evil. That's a heavy word. So Jesus is telling you and me, guess what's in the world? Evil, wickedness, sinfulness. 
And like I said, another way to translate this is deliver us from the evil one, Satan himself, because guess who's ultimately behind evil in the world? Satan, and we need to be delivered from him, protected from him and his works and his ways in our lives as we follow Christ, right? That's why this petition goes with, lead us not into temptation, right? Because guess what Satan's gonna try to do to you and me? Lead us into temptation, lead us into evil. St. Paul in Corinthians says that Satan masquerades around like an angel of light. He's beautiful, he's seductive. He's going to tempt you with the things that appeal to your heart and your sinful nature. So that's the second thing that we have to actually acknowledge is that uh, Satan is real and that he's at work in the world and he doesn't like Christians and he doesn't like the church. So when we pray this prayer, we're requesting that the Father Our Heavenly Father would protect us as his children in this world from evil that may happen because of sin, but that he would also protect us from the works of Satan in our lives, whether it's Satan attacking us or Satan tempting us and trying to lead us astray. To be honest, a lot of times those two truths are kind of ignored by a lot of Americans, especially a lot of American Christians, right? We don't wanna talk about evil. We don't wanna talk about wickedness or that Satan's real. But here's the reality. Every time you and I say the Lord's Prayer, how many of you say it pretty often? Yeah, every time you and I say the Lord's Prayer, guess what we're doing? We're acknowledging the existence of evil and Satan's work in this world against God's children, against his church. So the question becomes, How do we deal with that? How do we respond? And in John's Gospel, chapter 17, in the middle of Christ's high priestly prayer, he's going to teach us a few things. He says in verse 14, I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. So what does that sound like? There's evil in the world, right? Jesus says, I have called you, I have made you mine, right? That's what he's telling the Father. They belong to me now because I gave you the word. Jesus is saying, you you are my follower now because I gave you the word of the Father. And here's the result of that. The world now hates you. Anybody ever seen that as a church slogan? Hey, come to our church. Why, what's gonna happen? Everybody's gonna hate you. It's gonna be great. You're gonna love it, right? We don't say that. We don't talk like that. So often in our culture, what we say is, you follow Jesus, and and it's just gonna be awesome for you. It's just gonna be great. It's gonna give you everything you want. And Jesus says, I made you my own by giving you the word, the word of the Lord. And here's gonna be the result of following Jesus and God's word in an evil world. The the world will hate you. You notice that it doesn't say, we'll be annoyed with you or just slightly dislike you. What does it say? Not what does it say, what does Jesus say? The world will what? Hate you. Anybody excited for that? Like, I wanna follow Jesus more now, right? But here's the reality. If we are praying the Lord's prayer, I need you to deliver me from evil, that's acknowledging there is evil in the world. There is a way of living that follows Satan rather than it following Jesus. It's completely opposed to his way of love and mercy and grace and forgiveness. And Jesus says, and when you follow me, the world that's been deceived by Satan and led astray by him is not going to cheer and applaud you. It's going to hate you. And then he gives his word of comfort, which is just as I am not of the world, right? So he's saying, you're gonna be like me now. You're not gonna be of the world. You're not gonna be of Satan's ways. You're not gonna be following in those evil paths. You're gonna be like me now. And his point is, when she tells us multiple times throughout the Gospels is, 
The world hated me first, so now they're going to hate you. Right? Jesus is not hiding this from us, even if we want to ignore it. But he's saying, hey, when you as my followers go into the world, there is going to be resistance from evil and from Satan. But you're going to be following in his footsteps. You're going to be like him because he's called you by his word to be like him and to follow him. In verse 15, this is the part you're not gonna like. The rest has been awesome so far. I do not ask that you take them out of the world. That is the exact opposite of what so many of us as Christians do, right? We wanna make a Christian version of everything, right? So when I was growing up, one of my youth directors had these posters in his office. And on the one side of the poster, I don't know if anybody else had this experience, but I grew up in the Bible Belt, okay? On one side of the poster was all kinds of musicians and bands, okay? It was super popular at the time. On the other side of the poster was, if you like these people, then here's a Christian version of who you will probably like as well. Now, I love Christian music and praise God for it, but here's what we were doing in that moment. We are saying, the world is so evil, because Jesus says, hey, there's evil in the world, Satan is in the world. What we must do is hide from it and create a little bubble where everything is safe. But here's what Jesus says in verse 15. I do not ask that you take them out of the world. Sorry to burst everybody's bubble. Okay, what is Jesus saying to the Father? I don't want you to like hide them away from the rest of the world, even though that would be awesome, right? Because and show me, how many of you want to be hated later this week by somebody? Anybody? Right? So when Jesus says, hey, the world's going to hate you because there's evil and they're against me, we're like, that doesn't sound great. Can we hide until you come back? And here's what Jesus says. I'm not asking, Father, to take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. So Jesus wants you to be as his followers who have been made his disciples by his word to go into that world that is filled with evil and bring the good news of the gospel, right? Anybody ever heard of the Great Commission? That's what that is. He's not saying don't go hide. He said, no, I want you to go out in there. But here's my prayer for you. This is Jesus praying for you and me and every Christian in this prayer. He's saying, when you go out into the world, here's what I want to happen for you, that the Father would protect you from the evil one, that we would continue following him, that we would continue sharing the gospel, that we would continue following God's world, even when the world is against us or people hate us or attack us or persecute us or whatever it might be. Jesus never says, that's when I want you to go hide. He says, no, I want you to keep going into the world and bringing the good news of the gospel to people that need it. And as you go, here's my prayer for you, that you would be protected from the evil one. Jesus' prayer is not for us to hide from the reality of Satan's work in the world, of evil in the world. Instead, he wants us as the church to go out into the world to bring that healing gospel of forgiveness and grace in his name to the people that need to hear it. And he's telling us ahead of time, so we don't get shocked, they're not gonna like you all the time. In fact, sometimes they're gonna hate you because there is evil in the world. Satan is at work against his church in the world. And yet, at the same time, Jesus is praying for you and me that we would be protected from his work so that we can go about the work of sharing the gospel. Verse 16, they are not of the world just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. So where is Jesus sending us? 
the world, right? What did he just tell us about the world? It's going to hate us. It, there's evil in it. <laughs> Satan is at work in it. Now, anybody ever been scared before? Like legitimately terrified in life at some point? And you didn't want to do what you knew you had to do? When I was a little kid, it's the one and only time in my whole life, I was eight years old, I told my dad no to his face. I would talk behind his back all the time, as kids are supposed to do, right? But to his face, it was the one and only time in my whole life I ever told him no. And we were at a swimming pool in his apartment complex. And I had almost drowned three times before I was five, so pools were not exactly my thing, okay? <laughs> I was getting over some stuff. And my dad is talking to me, and he's in the deep end, and he's telling me, just jump in, right? My brother's like a professional Olympic swimmer over here and everything, and so my dad's like, just jump in, it'll be okay. And I'm terrified. So I'm standing on the edge of the pool, and my heart is racing, and I can't move. Anybody ever been so afraid you just, you know, you freeze? You're like, I don't know what to do. And my dad keeps telling me, just jump in, I'll catch you. I will catch you, you will be okay. And we do a couple of like false start jumps, right? Where it's like, one, on three, one, two, three. Can't move, legs don't work. <laughs> I'm not going in the pool. And then my dad eventually gets mad. He's like, Mark, you need to just trust me and jump into the pool. And I look at him and I go, no, the top of my lungs. I was not going to do it because I was afraid because pools to me at the time were terrifying. They were filled with danger. I had almost drowned multiple times. There was not like a fun experience. And I had my dad tell me, I will catch you. I will guard you. I will protect you. And my response was, no, I'm not moving. So often, we look at the world, we go, boy, is it filled with evil, right? We call that watching the news. You just look at the news and you go, yeah, there's a lot of evil that is incredibly heartbreaking in this world. And it can be scary. And then we hear Jesus say, yeah, and you know who else is at work in the world? Satan. And then Jesus tells his disciples, and he tells you and me here in John 17, and by the way, because you belong to me, the world's gonna hate you. And then he says, and I want you to go out there. <laughs> I want you to jump in and follow me. But don't worry, I'm praying for you. I'm going to protect you from the evil one. And I think so often in our lives, we're like me back there standing at my dad just going, no, I'm, I'm not jumping in. I don't trust you to protect me. I don't, I don't trust that it's gonna be safe. It's too dangerous. I could get hurt again. It could not go my way. Here's the problem with that mentality. The only way that people will change the only way the light of Jesus will grow farther into the darkness of the evil of the world is when his disciples, his church, you and me, hear him say, I'm sending you out into the world, and we say, okay, lead the way. Because if we as followers of Jesus don't go into the world like he tells us to, to bring the good news of the gospel, people's lives and people's hearts and people's eternities are never going to change. They're gonna be stuck in darkness. They're gonna be stuck being blinded, as St. Paul says in 1 Corinthians, by the devil and deceived by him. That's it. That's the reality that Jesus is telling to you and to me and every Christian. The only way anybody in the world and all of its evilness, and all of its darkness, and all of its deception by the devil ever gets saved, ever comes to a knowledge of who Jesus is and his grace and love and saving grace 
is if you and me as his followers go where? Into the world and bring the good news with us into that dark and hurting place. And so here are the three realities Jesus is teaching us in his prayers. There is evil in the world. Satan is at work against the church. And the world's gonna hate us. Those are three truths that he teaches us. But he also tells us in his word, I am praying for you to be protected from the evil one. Just think about that for a moment. Anybody ever been prayed for by somebody else? Show of hands. Someone else has prayed for you in your life. And how did that feel? Probably great, right? It felt encouraging, it felt uplifting. Here's what I want you to see. As you and I go into the scary world that is filled with evil, and Jesus says, they're gonna hate you. Jesus is the one praying for you to be protected from the evil one. Just think about that for a moment. Jesus is praying for you. So when you and I take that leap of faith and we jump into all that he's called us to, even if it is terrifying, even if it is scary, we go with this confidence knowing Jesus is with me and Jesus is praying protection over me. And if Jesus is praying for me and protecting me, then guess what I can do? I can go into the world knowing he is with me and I can bring the good news of the gospel with me. The last thing I wanna point out comes from our reading in Revelation chapter 12. Satan gets thrown out of heaven. He is defeated and here is how you and I become Christians and have victory over all this evil, how we have victory over the evil one that we pray about in the Lord's Prayer, and it's how everybody else in the world will also get that victory. Jesus is speaking in Revelation chapter 12, and John says, I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters has been thrown down, who accuses them day and night before our God. And in verse 11, they conquered him by the blood of the lamb and by their word of their testimony. For they loved not their lives, even unto death. I love that. They conquered Satan, they conquered evil, they conquered the evil one, by the blood of the lamb. Do you and I get to live in that victory? We get to be Christians because we've overcome sin, death, and the devil through the blood of the lamb, through the cross of Christ. And that's what Jesus is tending us into the world to do, is to bring that message to people who need to hear it. Other people who need to conquer the evil one, who need the victory over sin, death, and the devil in their lives. And they're only gonna get it through the blood of the lamb, through the cross of Christ. And they're only going to hear about Jesus if you and I face the evil of the world, the hatred of the world, knowing Jesus is with me, Jesus is praying for me, and that Jesus is the one sending me into the world to bring that good news. So again, there is evil in the world. It's absolutely true. It's absolutely true that Satan is at work in the world trying to deceive and blind people away from the truth of God's word. The world's gonna hate you sometimes because you're a Christian. But it's also true that Jesus has given you victory over sin, death, and the evil one through his blood on the cross. And it's also true that Jesus is telling you and me and every other Christian, I'm sending you into the world just as the Father sent me. And the way the Father sent Jesus was to bring the good news of the gospel, to bring the message of victory in Christ over sin, death, and the devil. And so that's our job now. He's calling us and saying, I'm gonna protect you, I'm gonna guard you, but I'm still gonna send you out. I don't want you to stay where it's safe. I want you to go into the world 
and bring the gospel. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we give thanks that you were sent from heaven to come and give us victory over sin, death, and the evil one, the devil. And that through your cross, through your blood, you have given us that victory through faith in you. Lord, remind us each and every day that you are praying for us, that you are with us, and that you are sending us so we may go into the world and bring the hope and grace of your salvation to a hurting and evil world that more and more people would know your love. In your name we pray, amen.